Hello friend, your friend Spencer here. I want to talk to you for just a moment about what kind of Christian music should you listen to. And uh, we have had a lot of people that have been watching our channel and have subscribed to our channel uh, because of the attention that we're drawing to the heretical nature, the source, and uh, the spirit and the fruit of modern Christian music and uh, just trying to expose that for what it is. And, and really, I think we've, we've dealt with a lot of different angles of that. And, uh, but I've had several questions come up and saying, you know, hey, okay, so if, if all this is bad, uh, then what can I listen to? And, and I got to admit, I, I think it's a great question. I think it's a fair question. And I feel like I haven't done a good enough job explaining that. And I, I wanna try to just take just one video and just try to deal with just that for a moment. Um, so what kind of Christian music should you listen to? You know, when I was a, when I first got saved, um, I was a rock and roll guy. I mean, I was I was listening to all kinds of stuff. I, I at the time I was listening to a lot of really heavy rock. I was listening. I think the Metallica S and M album had just come out. I was I was just jamming to that all the time, and uh, just just really anything heavy rock like that. I loved that kind of stuff. That's what I wanted to, to listen to, and I did listen to that all the time. Um, but I went to, I got saved and I, I said, you know, I just felt like the Lord told me I couldn't listen to that anymore. It was just too carnal, fleshly, demonic and all that stuff. And so, um, I, I just did the only thing I knew to do. I went to Walmart and just saw that, uh, okay, I got to listen to Christian music now cause I'm a Christian. <laughs> and, uh, the only face I recognized on that rack was Bill Gaither. And I, I just happened to see him on TBN. So I just, I bought two Gaither Homecoming albums. And, and fortunately, they were good ones. <laughs> uh, they were uh, they were ones that had uh, a lot of old hymns on it and stuff like that. And so, and it really wasn't contemporary or nothing. So so I, I really, I just, just happened to just pick the right ones. And, and so my journey to understand Christian music better kind of started there. And I went to Crown College and, and I learned a lot there while I was there. But I want to give you three things real quick about what's the right kind of Christian music to listen to. And I want you to just take note of these things, okay? The first thing is, okay, consider the source of the music. If a, if a CD, if a genre, if a artist is an employee of a secular record company, like Universal Music Group, then you should probably not have anything to do with them because they're not Christian performers per se. They're, they're employees of secular record company that are filling a niche of a specific gospel genre, and that doesn't make them a Christian. Look, singing gospel music doesn't make you a Christian. It doesn't, okay? I mean, it just doesn't. And you have to realize that. Here's here's what I want to throw out there. I, I think the local church should be making music. I think the local church should be making CDs. And there are a lot of local church ministries who have done a great job as as far as producing music uh, for churches to listen to. Um, you know, we got Faith Music Missions up there in Indiana. I think they do a great a great job with some music. And uh, but but I think that what happens is okay. Record companies scout churches for talent. And when they find talent, they, they hire them to be a traveling singing group making money. And it's, it's, none of it's based at the local church. All, of it, all the money's coming through record labels. All the money's, you know, I, I mean, the, the Dove Music Group that was out there years ago um, and, and all that. I mean, all that's owned by major corporations like Sony and Universal and all that stuff. And so if, if there's a connection there, I wouldn't touch it. I, and I don't touch it. Um, our radio station, WIOP Radio, is a local church ministry. And all the singers that are on there, with, with maybe one or two exceptions for the most part, are local church people. And, and the funny thing is, is because we just got something in the mail recently uh, uh, from uh, a, like a royalty company. And they're saying that, you know, you need to, you need to pay us $500 or we'll fine you and whatever. Uh, for playing music from this, 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 and talk about the record companies, and and we went look, we don't play anything from any record companies. I think I think we got a couple of the Isaacs songs on our on our radio station, and and they're they're you know they're employees of a record company, and um, you know a, a while back I put uh, 
there was a video that I put up from WIP Jubilee where Brady Rochester family sang something. It just happened to sound, it, it triggered the copyright on there. It's because somehow the Isaacs wrote that song and then they signed the rights of, of that song over to the Universal Music Group and now Universal Music Group is claiming my video. And so I just took the video down. I didn't want it on there. But with very few exceptions, our radio station plays local church groups and they're singing, they record it themselves, and they produce it themselves, and they, they put it out there, and we play it on a radio. So you, when you consider what kind of Christian music should I listen to, you need to consider the source and quit allowing secular record companies to feed, I mean, these ungodly, unsaved people, these record companies producing your music for you to worship God with, I, it just, it doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at all. Why would you do that? And so you need to consider that. You need to really track that down. And you need to download our app, WIOP Radio. And I, I want to say that very clearly, WIOP Radio. You can look for that app on your smartphone or you can go to WIOPRadio.com. I have a lot of our international friends who have trouble with my uh, Southern American accent. And not South American, but Southern North American accent. And uh, so... Uh, but check that out, WIOP Radio. You can get the app and go to WIOPRadio.com. You can listen to a lot of that stuff on there. And that's, that's what I would say. Consider the source of all that. Uh, number two, um, you need to consider the substance of a song. If it's just this, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, Jesus, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, Jesus, yeah. That, that's not, that, that doesn't say anything. That's meaningless. It's meaningless. I have a hymn book in front of me, and uh, this is the old Sword of the Lord hymn book that uh, they still put out. A great hymn book, by the way, and, and I've, I like this one. Um, hymn 262 is written by P.P. P. Bliss, Philip P. Bliss, one of the great hymn writers, traveled with D.L. Moody a long time. Wrote a hymn called The Light of the World Was Jesus. Let me just read some of these lyrics to you so you can get some substance here. Uh, the whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory is shown in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Um, just tremendous, tremendous lyrics meet there in that song, if I could put it that way. Uh, number 329 is Take Time to Be Holy. Let me read you these lyrics here. Uh, take, to, take time to be holy, speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends and thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Boy, that's a blessing. <laughs> I like that. And uh, that's, uh, that's one of, uh, really one of my favorite hymns right there of all time. So the meat of that, the meaningful lyrics of that are, are so good. And really, um, it's the message of these songs. It's the message of these old songs that blesses me. It's not even, it's not the, the emotional euphoria of the hypnotic chords and the repeti the repetitious you know nature of the songs the ooh 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 711 songs which is 711 is seven words sang 11 times uh, that's you know it, it's i just i can read the lyrics and be blessed because the lyrics are meaningful and so that's that's something you need to consider the substance of a song uh, number 333 uh, one of Fanny Crosby's great hymns take the world but give me Jesus all its joys are but a name but his love abideth ever through eternal years the same oh the height and depth of mercy oh the length and breadth of love oh the fullness of redemption pledge of endless life above well that's a blessing that's a great song that's a great song tremendous and uh, I mean I want to read the last the last verse of this uh, take the world but give me Jesus in his cross my trust shall be <laughs> till with clearer, brighter vision, face to face, my Lord, I see. Uh, I want to read another one because I'm just going to enjoy that. So, uh, take the world, but give me Jesus. Let me view his constant smile. Then throughout my pilgrim journey, light will cheer me all the while. What I mean, hallelujah. What a blessing. And modern Christian music, you know, Toby Mac, whatever, all those weirdos with their funky Jesus noises as they so so astutely and theologically gloriously put it didn't measure up not even the same stuff really it's not even worthy to be compared to what's in that hymn book right there 
so you got your source, you got your substance, and then also you got your style, the style of music. Um, can I tell you this? You can put good words to bad music and it's not good. Not good. I mean, you can put a glorious steak, a beautiful ribeye cooked medium rare, marinated in Dales for about 21 minutes and, and cooked over a grill, seared just right with a char. You could put that beautiful steak, oh, the, the wonderful steak. You can take that and put it in a trash can with flies and nasty filth. And I'm not touching that steak. You can present it to me in a trash can. I will not touch it. And that's what you're doing. You're putting religious words into the trash can, the fleshly garbage can of rock and roll music. And I'm not going to take it. It's not good for me. Now, Ephesians 4 talks about speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Spiritual songs cannot be fleshly songs. You can't jam for the lamb and be spiritual. You cannot rock the flock and be right with God. Because that's flesh. All of that is flesh. That's flesh, guys. That's flesh is what it is, okay? I mean, you got a bunch of 16-year-olds with his hair, you know, over his face doing, you know, three power chords on a on a, a Fender Stratocaster and thinking he's living for Jesus and he's helping people. No, that's just, that's religious flesh. That's all he's doing. He just, I mean, he's just up there just displaying his flesh and he's using religious words to it and it's not it's not that's not what god's the god's not in that that's not spirituality okay i remember when i first got saved i there was a radio station there in metro atlanta called 104.7 the fish and i turned that on i said okay i need to listen to christian music and i and i turned it on and third day came on best back before third day went country music like they did mocking God and country music songs and I mean that's what these guys did because that's the nature of music industries that these guys are using these guys are using the Christian world as a stepping stone to go to bigger and higher things so they can go hang out with Travis Tritt and uh, be professional country music singers that's what they're doing and that's what the lead singer, at least of Third Day, did. But I remember listening to that and just listening to the to the power chords, and I understand how, how all that works, and just the 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 rock music that that Third Day was listening. And I say, you know, these bunch of dweebs are trying to sound like Metallica. And I said, I don't. Wanna... If I want to listen to Metallica, I want to listen to Metallica, man, because you guys are not even good at rock and roll. <laughs> I mean, Christian people doing rock and roll, you, you're the bunch of dorkiest bunch of humans on the planet. I mean, you're all effeminate looking. Okay, a real rock star is a man. He's got big biceps and he's tough looking and he's got you know, that, 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 that face. And I mean, he, he looks cool, but then you got these little effeminate hippie little things. And then, we love Jesus. I mean, it just, it's not the same stuff, man. I mean, y'all bunch of dweebs need to stop singing this effeminate girly music and calling it rock it's not the same stuff i mean it's like a 400 pound man getting out there trying to be a ballerina i mean no that's not what you are get get out go do something else and that's what i feel about christian people trying to do rock music that's not what rock is and i deal with that in my book i mean i i even quote a comedian and and many, I actually cover this in my book, but actually, South Park actually did an episode mocking you people about how dumb it is that Christian people are trying to sing rock music. And it's like, it's like the perfect oxymoron, Christian rock. It, it, it doesn't work. It's, it, the, the Bible says psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. And so you can't, you can't merge the two. You can't merge flesh and spirit. And so I hope I give you some things to think about here in this video. And I hope I give you some idea about the spectrum you need to be in. And there, there is, I understand in music, there is a little bit of subjectivity. And, and folks, honestly, I cannot go through every single song in existence and tell you yes or no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. This is something you need to learn to discern yourself. And if you ask God to show you the truth, he'll show you the truth. And then eventually you'll hear a song and you're like, oh, I don't know why, but there's something wrong with that. And you need to cut that off, cut that out of your life. 
And so I, I wish I could just go through every song in existence and every artist that existed and say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Um, but I want to give you those principles, the three principles there, and those three principles will help you basically navigate the entire issue. Okay. Number one, consider the source. If they're working for secular record companies and all that stuff, run away. Okay. Get out of all those guys. And that, that eliminates 99% of it right there. And then number two, look at the substance. Is are there are the, what they're saying? Is it meaningful? Is it biblically true? And then thirdly, the style. So the source, the substance, the style. You cannot be spiritual with rock music. You, there's no such thing as Christian techno. If you think there's a such thing as Christian rock, one or two things is true. Either you don't understand rock music, or you don't understand Christianity. One of those is true. And so I want to give you those things to think about. And so we're going to talk about we're going to talk a lot more about this type of stuff. There, there's so much out there that really this is not a small topic. And I've got I've actually got a lot of things planned in the future. So stay with us in this channel. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff. And so go ahead and subscribe if you're there. Just go ahead and check it out and subscribe to this channel. And uh, help us by liking this video. Help us by sharing our videos. And uh, pray about helping us in Kenya. We've got a lot of big needs there. We're trying to be a part of. Trying to get some things done. So help us. Help us uh, pray about that. And just pray that God will have His hand on us there. And so uh, we appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much for that. And uh, go ahead and share this video with your friends, family. And we appreciate you guys so much. Have a good night. Thank you very much.